Get those toes. Get them. Get them, get them, get them. <laughs> Ford, he was a kind of a little stinker coming into the world. <laughs> he took a little bit longer than the rest of the children, but uh, we just expected a healthy baby. The first few days, we that's what we thought he was, just a healthy newborn baby until things changed. Um, one of the doctors had come and, and told us that he had a condition called uh, coarctation of the aorta. We had no idea what that meant. <laughs> we were being told they needed very urgent and close to immediate heart surgery. Well, little Sunday morning, we got a phone call. The doctor had called to tell us that Ford was not moving. There was no motor skills. We needed to figure out what was causing this paralysis. All, all of a sudden, the, what seemed like a <laughs> nightmare the day before, it sounded like a pretty good condition was, if we could just get to the point he could have the surgery, things would be great. We had, we had planned something different and uh, he, was, he was there and at some points we didn't know if he'd be coming home or not. One of the things that helps when you're feeling hopeless is to be able to see all these doctors and nurses that knew so much that we didn't obviously didn't know and they were so confident we put a lot of trust in people we didn't know. That was probably the most emotional um, part of the experiences when the when the paralysis went away and, and uh, we realized that um, he'd be able to have his operation after all. And Those several hour gaps when he was in the operating room were some of the toughest times for us. He looked rough, he had everything hooked up that you could possibly hook up to a baby. I don't think there were more places they could put holes or meters or whatever they had hooked up to him. I remember the, the second morning of his birth, he had these eyes that just looked at me and then for, uh, it hurt so much in the hospital because he, his eyes were closed for about most of the two weeks. Well, I saw the family of a, a baby who had just passed away and, and we knew that um, we were pretty grateful and pretty fortunate to have what we had. It was really heart-wrenching, I think, to me when he was intubated, so he wasn't able to make noise. He was trying to scream, but there was no... His vocal cords were blocked by the tube, yeah, and so there he, was no sound. he was crying, but there was no noise. Crying became a sound we were looking for as we were going through the, the weeks in the hospital. It was, it was uh, a great day when we heard him cry again. That was a wonderful feeling to put, to have him in my arms again not be hooked up to so many things and that I could touch him and hold him. It's been a remarkable transition from this nightmare experience to today where if his shirt's on, you can't tell that he's not a 100% normal baby. We hope for Ford's future that eventually down the road that chicks will dig scars. <laughs> Definitely. I think I think there's, there's nothing to stop him from anything. I picture him beating up on his brother and his brothers and sister and joining the ruckus that we call home. <laughs> the human heart, if I, if I had to define it in one word, would be remarkable. Uh, the fact that it, it functions from a power greater than ours, but uh, that we have the ability as people to um, make it work when it, when it doesn't. The way to describe the human heart is, is love. And we have felt that love for Ford from us as parents to him, from strangers, from doctors, to, to fix this organ that is supposed to cause us to love. It's, a, it's important to us in supporting the American Heart Association that we understood um, what, it, what it does in Utah, what it does for people like our, our Ford, and know that the, um, the funds raised um, change lives and, and uh, make life possible. As the motto goes, Built Ford tough. <laughs>